Hey everyone, it's Sean. In the previous video, I walked you through how to build a table in InDesign from scratch. It was super basic. We built it within a body of text. This video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to import type and data from programs like Excel and Microsoft, what happens when they are formatted properly, what happens when they're not formatted properly, and how to troubleshoot both situations. So let's just jump right in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document in InDesign, obviously, and I just want a standard 8.5 by 11, nothing too fancy here, so I'm going to go up to print, and I'm going to just set this to landscape because I find it's easier to deal with this information when it's landscape. Cool. So we have our new document. And what I've done is I have provided you guys with a project folder um, that has a bunch of table information in it. And what we're going to look at first is uh, importing a table from Excel. Okay. So what I noticed was uh, the new version of Excel, or maybe it's the new version of InDesign, um, they sort of have problems with each other. And uh, I'm just going to um, bring in, sorry, I'm going to go to my tables demo folder. I'm going to show you guys this file that I have. It's called uh, Vlog Equipment Checklist Don't Import. And the reason why I want to show you this is because you might go to import a file from Excel um, into the new version of InDesign, uh, and this could happen to you, where it says, cannot place this file, no filter found for request operation. Now, this took me a couple minutes to figure out, and what I noticed was the workaround is if you have your Excel file open, um, if you saved, if you just hit save as, and it brought up excelworkbook.xlsx, um, it's going to have a problem dealing with this file. And I'm not sure if it's because it's the new version of Excel or it's the new version of InDesign, but what I did figure out is if you switch it over to the Excel 97 to 2004 workbook and you hit save, um, then it will not have a problem. So I did that and I named the folder or I named the file import and we can hit open and uh, let's make sure before we hit open we have show import options selected so we can hit ok and our show import options dialog box shows up and it will ask you what sheet of this workbook do you want to bring in sometimes excel files have multiple sheets this workbook only has one sheet It'll then ask you, oh, what range of cells do you want to bring in? And you can tell it's asking for cell A1 all the way down to cell E14 or E15, I think, E15. So that will select the entire table for us. I don't need to import hidden cells. We don't need to worry about that. Um, formatting. This is a big one. Do you want it to come in as a formatted table, an unformatted table, uh, unformatted tabbed text, or format only once? Um, I'm going to leave this as a formatted table for the purposes of this example. And cell alignment, it will bring the cell alignment from the current spreadsheet. Um, you could tell it to align everything left, center, or right. But for now, let's just leave it as current spreadsheet. And if it had graphics in it, it would bring in graphics as well. Um, that's about it. So let's just hit OK. You'll notice that it brings up this uh, sort of texty section here that we're used to seeing when we're importing large bits of text. And we can click and drag this out to the width of the um, margins of our page and boom. You might need to do a little bit of formatting options. So if we just double click into the table, uh, we can drag the column width here and bring in that final column so that it sits within the margins of our page, just like so. And boom, we have a perfectly formatted table, uh, practically ready to go. It just needs a lot of designing done to it for it to work out well. Um, but that is pretty solid in my book. Now, what happens if it doesn't go as smoothly as that? Um, what happens if you are given, uh, let's say you're given a Word document and there is a table within that Word document? What do you do? Um, well, we can go into uh, File Place or Command D and I'm going to grab the table formatted. I'm going to have Show Import Options open again. I'm going to hit Open. And it wants to ask us all sorts of questions here. We've gone over this before. Um, I'm going to leave 
everything the same, I believe. Preserve style text tables. Okay, so this is the big one that we have to pay attention to. Preserve styles and formatting from text and tables. We can hit OK. And it's telling me that it's missing a typeface. It's going to substitute it with a default font. No big deal. We can click and drag this out. And it comes in with a formatted table. Um, the difference between this table and the Excel table, the Excel table didn't have a border on the outside. This one does. Um, but hey, that's a pretty close one. We could easily work with this. You can see that it is a fully editable table. Uh, we can go in and make all the same design decisions that we would have previously. Now, um, I'm going to go and hit File Place one more time. And I'm going to bring in the same file. Uh, let's leave show import options on and let's just say for a second you had remove styles selected. Uh, what happens when you bring this in? I'm going to click and drag it out. Oh my gosh, it's a mess. It's such a headache. I don't even know what I'm looking at. I just know I'm confused and I'm, I'm a little bit scared. Um, this is not a big problem. What we can do is we can select all. We can go up to table, convert text to table. And it's going to ask you what call like what is the thing telling it to separate columns? What is the special character, the hidden the hidden value? And in this case, we're going to leave it as tabs. Um, when you import this, it automatically knows this is not a space. This is a tab. Um, so if we hit OK, then boom, it will create. Uh, it will create a whole thing, a whole table. Um, it's not as well formatted. It's not perfectly set up. Uh, you can tell that there's some overset text here. So let's just go and take a look at what's causing this overset text. And it looks like there's an extra column that we don't need for some reason. It's missing all the dollar values. So not a perfect way to go about bringing in a table, but it still saves you a ton of time from having to copy and paste everything from one document to the next. So let's just delete that one. And finally, um, I'm going to show you guys what happens. Let me just open up the other Word document, Table Tabs. So this looks pretty well formatted. And yet again, these are not spaces. These are tabs. There's just one um, cursor, sort of, or one character separating all these things. Um, so if we were to, I'm going to get off of preview mode here, File Place and bring in this table tab and we want to uh, we want to remove all styles is that okay mm -hmm, doo -doo. and drag it out to the width of our margins we can do the same thing table uh, sorry we have to have it all selected first command a table convert text to table tabs and this one actually formatted it much better. Um, this is because <laughs> this document was set up properly um, in uh, Microsoft Word, surprisingly, and it requires very little formatting. Um, you might just need to merge some of these cells and then uh, you know start actually applying your design changes to it. But this is yet again another fully editable um, gra uh, chart or table that you could work from. So that is absolutely wonderful. But I'm still uh, more of a fan of bringing stuff in from Excel uh, if it's available, and I will show you why. So what I'm going to do is Command D, File Place. I'm going to bring in the Excel file one more time. I'm going to hit Open. Uh, everything here is totally fine. I'm going to click and drag this guy out to the edges of our margins. Boom. And we're just going to do that minor formatting thing where we bring the column in closer. There we go. Terrific. And the reason why I like bringing things in from Excel is because A, it retains its formatting, right? So the cost column was right aligned, the title was center aligned, um, everything else was either center or left aligned. So it does a good job at relatively bringing in the formatting of the original table. Now, the other reason why I like this is because let's say you needed to change here. Let me full screen this so it's a little bit easier to see. Cool. Uh, the reason why I like this is because let's say you have to change um, some of our values. Let's say the quantity of uh, cameras 
changed for this vlog and all of a sudden they're going from a two camera setup to a crazy four camera setup and that means that they need an extra tripod so they need four tripods they'll probably need another lighting stand so they'll need four lighting stands what we can do is we can um, click and drag and select this entire column we can hit copy we can come out of Excel really quick we can go into InDesign and we can select just this one column by clicking and dragging and we can hit paste and it will automatically update the right uh, cells the right formatting all that jazz subsequently you could also let's just um, go back into Excel here I'm going to undo these changes command Z command Z great I'm going to actually zoom out a bit so I can see my whole table. Terrific. And I'm going to select every single cell from top to bottom. I'm going to hit Command C. And now I can jump back into InDesign and using the top left corner, select all and hit Command Paste, Command V. And it will automatically uh, revert or update all the changes that I made for the entire thing, keeping all of the formatting changes again. Um, and it just makes for a much more seamless transition of information. So let's say you guys are responsible for making a monthly newsletter and maybe it's financial data instead of an equipment checklist like this. You can just very quickly and easily um, sort of switch out one set of data for the next without having to worry about reformatting an entire table from scratch every single time. So this really is the better option to go about formatting a table with and uh, just goes to show you why Microsoft Word ain't got nothing on InDesign, ain't got nothing on Excel when it comes to working with uh, tables and charts. So we're just going to close our uh, Word documents because we won't need them anymore and we will start working with this table here. I'll catch you guys in the next video where we start getting into things like table styles, cell styles, and trying to make our uh, chart actually pop off the page.